Hello, I'm Atul Jamin. You're watching on Bill TV's Prime at 9. Now, news and details. Voting to elect the 15th President of India concluded in Parliament and across state assemblies. The polling had begun at 10 a.m. today with Prime Minister Narendra Modi among those voting for the presidential elections. The voting for the presidential election concluded peacefully with a total turnout of 99.18% at Parliament on Monday, said Chief Returning Officer P.C. Modi. The ballot boxes will arrive in Parliament from across the country by the end of the day, Modi added. The president is elected by members of the Electoral College, college consisting of elected members of parliament and of all the state assemblies, including the National Capital Territory of Delhi and the Union Territory of Puducherry. Nominated members of the parliament, state assemblies and members of Legislative Council are not eligible to vote. A total of 776 members of the parliament and 4,033 MLAs will vote in the presidential elections. Nagaland's Assistant Returning Officer for Presidential Election 2022, Kruho Tinyo Rio, informed that the election to the 15th Presidential Election 2022 was conducted successful today from 10 a.m. till 5 p.m. at the Nagaland Legislative Assembly with 59 sitting members participated in the election. The older state legislators, Kajong Chang, 88 years old, could not cast his vote due to health issues. State Chief Minister Nipuriu, while speaking to the media persons after casting his vote for the presidential election at the Nagaland Legislative Assembly in Kohima, said that Parliamentary Committee has appealed to the negotiating parties to refer to the competencies as reflected in the Framework Agreement of August 3, 2015, signed between the Government of India and the NSC and IM. Definition of competencies is inserted in the framework agreement which we do not know, he said, for which Rio said that Parliamentary Committee has requested the Prime Minister and Home Minister to invite the NSC and IM leaders to sort it out at the earliest. All possible to see that success comes and I have been telling others also in our resolution yes, point number three. Yes, the parliamentary committee requests the negotiation parties mm -hmm. to refer to the competencies agreed no? in framework agreement yes. on 3rd August 2015. So it is signed by them and it is that company's word is inserted in the framework agreement. So that secret, we don't know, it is with them. That's why we requested Honorable Prime Minister and Home Minister to call and discuss, sort it out. Also, NPF leader and co-chairman of UDA government, Kuzuluzo Nina, said that 60 legislators, including the two MPs, are very serious of the Naga political issue. He said that the agreed position and the competencies will be clubbed together and they will make comprehensive studies on both the issues and then they will bring out the common draft and once the common draft is brought, then it will be given to the public domain for public acceptance. 60 legislators, including the two MPs, were very serious on this. The agreed position and the competition clauses 
will be club up together. Will be club up together. They will do. They will do a comprehensive, comprehensive study on both the both the issues, and then they will bring up a common draft. And once that common draft is brought out, then it will be given to public domain for public's acceptance. The seven PG, they're already ready here in Delhi. But now, as per our resolution, government of India has to take it seriously and invite the IM. Chief Minister Nipurio said that the encroachment is happening everywhere in the state and the worst is in Dimapur Airport, which is in the court. He said that Dimapur Airport runways has only about 2.3 kilometers and to extend a little bit in the rivers, land are also purchased and is allotted to some individual which is endangering to everyone. We also added that short runway is risking lives. We also said that every individual is responsible and should voice together as one individual cannot be benefited at the cost of all the people. The Dimapur Airport the encroachment, mm -hmm. which is in the court. Mm -hmm. Now, <coughs> runway has only about uh, 2.3 kilometers. And to extend a little bit also, till the river, mm -hmm. the land was purchased and it has been allotted to some individuals. Mm -hmm. That means it is endangering you and me, everybody who is flying. Mm -hmm. We cannot continue to use a short runway. And uh, even this, uh, the big size points cannot come. So we are risking our own life. People like you and me or any responsible people should voice together. We cannot benefit one individual at the cost of all the people. For uh, people who feel aggrieved, or it is right for everybody to demand for the right. But the uh, government will examine and take decisions. So we stand by our immediate decision. On the Nagaland in Service Doctors Association, an idea calls for indefinite agitation to enhance the superannuation age of doctors from 60 years to 62 years. The chief minister said that the government will examine and take the decision accordingly. The second monkeypox case in India has been detected in Kerala's Kanur, said state health department officials on Monday. This is the second case of monkeypox in the state as well as the country. State Health Minister Vina George said the patient who arrived in Kerala on July 13 was a native of Kannur and was undergoing treatment at the Pariyaram Medical College there. His health condition is stable, she added. The minister also said that all those who were in close contact with the patient are being closely monitored. Kerala reported India's first case of the virus on Thursday. A person who returned from abroad has been admitted to a hospital in Kerala after he showed symptoms of monkeypox. According to the World Health Organization, monkeypox is a viral zoonosis, a virus transmitted to humans from animals, with symptoms similar to those seen in the past in smallpox patients, although it is clinically less severe. The Directorate of Health and Family Welfare has issued an advisory on Monday to citizens warning them about the monkeypox virus and appealing for care and caution as the case of monkeypox has been reported in India too. The department said monkeypox is a viral zoonotic disease that also can be transmitted to people. Typically, the virus is transmitted by contact with an infected animal's body, secretion or a bite. In regard to transmission from human to human, it is through direct physical contact with bodily fluids, sexual contact or lesion material, through contaminated clothing or linens of affected person, and through large respiratory droplets as a result of prolonged close contact, the advisory stated. The common symptoms of monkeypox include fever, skin rashes starting from face, spreading to arms, legs, palms and soles, limp note enlargement and headache, muscle ache or exhaustion, and sore throat and cough. Monkeypox can cause pain in the eyes or blurry vision, shortness of breath or difficulty in breathing, and chest pain, altered consciousness and seizures, and decrease in urine output. 
Further, there are certain high-risk populations are likely to be severely affected by monkeypox, such as persons with significant comorbidities and immunocompro individuals, the advisory stated. Troops of the Indian Army's Rupai Battalion of Red Shield Division launched an operation along with Satya Police and apprehended an activist of Naga National Government, Keta, in the general area of New Palijan of Satya District Assam. The monsoon session of the parliament began on July 18. The lower house paid operatory to former Japanese PM. Shinzo Abe, who was shot recently while on a campaign. The obituaries were paid to other prominent personalities, including ex UAE President Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nayan, legendary Hindustani classical musician Pandit Shiv Kumar Sharma, and others. The House observed silence as a mark of respect to the memory of the departed. Voting in the 16th presidential elections was held in Manipur Legislative Assembly on Monday. NDA candidate Dropati Murmu has already visited the state and canvassed for the election. Chief Minister Nbiran Singh was the first to cast a vote in the presidential election 2022, followed by opposition leader and former Chief Minister O. Ibopi Singh. All 60 MLAs of the state have cast their votes to elect the 15th President of India, which began at 10 a.m. Chief Minister Nbiran Singh said that out of 60 MLAs in the state, National Democratic Alliance candidate Tropati Murmu will get the votes of at least 55 MLAs. And she is expected to the win the presidential election without any difficulty. Former Chief Minister O. Ibobi Singh said the opposition presidential candidate is one of the most capable candidate and the opposition has full faith in the democratic process. The counting of votes will take place on July 21st and the new president will take oath on July 25th as per the ECI schedule. As many as 13 passengers were killed after Maharashtra Roadways bus fell off Kalkat Sanjay Setu in Madhya Pradesh on Monday. According to the details, the incident was reported from the Dhar district of the state. Commenting on the bus accident, Madhya Pradesh Minister Naruttam Mishra said the bus was travelling from Indore to Pune at the time of the incident. A total of 15 people have been so far been rescued from the accident site. Visuals shared by the news agency and I showed locals gathering at the site of the MP bus accident. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Narendra Modi expressed grief over the Madhya Pradesh bus accident. Taking it to Twitter, the PMO said the bus tragedy in Dhar, Madhya Pradesh is saddening. My thoughts are with those who have lost their loved ones. Rescue work is underway and local authorities are providing all possible assistance to those affected. Shiv Sena Zudav Takri locked in battle with Eknath Shinde for the control of the party formed by his father has sacked several key leaders for entire party activities. Shinde, who succeeded Thackeray to the post of the chief minister after bringing down his government, has been quick to react, picking up the leaders discarded by the Thackeray camp. So far, the team Thackeray has sacked former minister Vijay 
Shiv Tari, MLA Santosh Pangar, who was sacked as district chief of Hingoli, Naresh Maske as Zila Pramukh for Thane. Barring the first, both leaders have been reinstated by the Shinde camp, which claims to the real Shiv Sena. Takri has also appointed more than 100 new office bearers in Thane, Bulgar, Amarvati and Yavalt Mal district. The puning comes ahead of a crucial Supreme Court hearing of the huge political storm in Maharashtra following the rebellion by Ignat Shinde, which led to the installation of the Shinde PJP combined government. On Wednesday, the top court will hear a bunch of petitions from both sides of the disqualification of MLAs. Suspended PJP spokesperson Nupur Sharma on Monday moved the Supreme Court seeking a stay on her arrest in the fires registered against her for the alleged objectionable comments she made on Prophet Muhammad on national television. Sharma also sought revival of her withdrawn plea to club the multiple fires registered against her across the country. Further, she sought expansion of adverse remarks made by a vacation bench on July 1st while hearing her petition in this regard. An SC bench of Justice J.P. Bariwala and Justice Surya Kant had rebuked Sharma for her disturbing remarks against the Prophet. While refusing to entertain her plea, the bench had said Sharma's remarks led to unfortunate incidents and ignited emotions across the country. Sharma's comments had created an uproar within the country with massive rallies taken out by the Muslim groups beside causing a diplomatic fallout with several Muslim nations registering their official protests. Manipur Governor La Ganeshan has been given the post of Governor of Bengal for the time being. As President Ramnath Kovin has accepted the resignation of West Bengal Governor Jagdeep Thankar, who has been nominated as the Vice President candidate by the National Democratic Alliance. The PJP announced Thankar's candidature for the Vice President election on Sunday. Prime Minister Narendra Modi expressed his happiness and said, glad that he will be our NDSVP candidate. Meanwhile, the opposition party nominated Margaret Alva as its VP candidate. The president has been pleased to appoint La Ganeshan, governor of Manipur, to discharge the functions of the governor of West Bengal in addition to his own duties from the date he assumes charge of the office until regular arrangements are made. All the people of Manipur, especially the eligible voters, they should exercise their franchise. Because in our country, huh? democracy, democracy is prevailing and the sign of democracy is the election. And all these officers, election officers and uh, thousands and thousands of people, they are trying their best to see that every eligible voter is registered. Sri Lanka's acting president Ranil Wickremesinghe has declared a state of emergency according to a government notice released late on Sunday as his administration seeks to quell social unrest and tackle an economic crisis gripping the island nation. Sri Lanka's ousted President Kotabaya Rajabaksha, who fled overseas this week to escape a popular uprising against his government, has said that he took all possible steps to avert the economic crisis that has engulfed the island nation. As the counting of votes for Madhya Pradesh Municipal Election 2022 took place on July 17, where PJP recorded a landslide victory, State Chief Minister Shivraj Singh Chauhan said PJP has scripted history and won over 80% of seats this time. जब से हमने प्रदेश में सरकार बनाई थी नगर परिषद और नगर पालिका में ऐसी शानदार जीत इसके पहले कभी हासिल नहीं हुई भारतीय जनता पार्टी ने विजय का एक नया इतिहास रचा है अभी आज तक कभी नहीं हुआ मैं इतने वर्षों से देख रहा हूं आमतौर पर नगर पंचायत के चुनाव में that's all we have for now. Keep watching Hornbill TV.